Welcome again, everyone, to another class with me, Sean Helene. Today, we're going to be using length in our side bodies to help open and deepen twisting poses. And today, you will definitely need a strap, and I would highly recommend having two blocks, but you could definitely do this class without two blocks as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So today, I want you to start by lying on your back with your strap. We'll just begin with simple Supta Padmasana, which translates as reclined hand to foot pose. So I want you to take your left leg up into the sky, slide the strap around your left foot, and extend your left leg up. Now today when you put the strap around your foot, instead of placing it around the arch of the foot or the heel of the foot, I want you to slide the strap up so that it's around the mounds of the toes, which is the part of the foot that it's at the base of the toes. Then, as you exhale, I want you to push the mounds of your toes up into the strap and squeeze your left leg until it straightens a little bit more. Now keep doing that with your left leg and at the same time, squeeze your right thigh and press your right thigh down into the floor. And then go ahead and switch legs. Place the strap around your right foot in the same way. Slide the strap around the mounds of the right foot. And then notice when you try to push the mounds of the foot up into the strap, are you just pushing the toes and curling the toes? That's what a lot of us do unintentionally. So actually, instead of pushing the toes themselves up, push the mounds up right where the strap is and you'll feel potentially a lengthening in the back of the hamstring. And then squeeze your right leg again, squeeze your left leg again, and press your thighs towards the hamstring sides of your legs. And then let's do that one more time. Left leg up, right leg down. A lot of the twisting poses we're gonna do require um, pretty lax and open hamstrings. So this will be a really nice way to get started, especially if hamstrings are very difficult for you. Same thing as before. Press the mounds of the foot up into the strap, press your right thigh down and squeeze your left thigh strongly. And then switch sides, final time, place the strap around your right foot. <laughs> Cape socks are not required, but it makes this a little more fun. Then as you exhale, press up into the mounds of the right foot, especially the big toe mound. Squeeze your legs, breathe. Enjoy, and I say enjoy because things are about to get a little more intense than this. And then slowly release. Move your strap off to the side. We're gonna come back to some strap work later. And then hug both knees into your chest. So side note, when you rock side to side, that tends to be more soothing, but then when you rock back and forth, that tends to be a little more Invigorating. So go ahead and begin to rock up and down, coming up a little bit higher each time. And then the next time you come forward, cross your ankles, place your hands at the top of your mat, and step back to down facing dog. Separate your feet as wide as your mat and your down dog. Spread your fingers evenly. Bend your knees slightly. Reach your hips back as you push your hands down and forward. Then keep your hips reaching back and begin to stretch your legs a little bit straighter and longer. Then bring your feet back to about hips distance apart. Inhale, take your right leg up into the sky. Exhale, bring your knee to your nose and your shoulders forward. Push your hands down, raise your knee higher. Inhale, stretch your right leg back, three-legged dog. And then step your right foot forward between your hands. Lower your left knee to the ground. Keep your left toes tucked underneath. And then twist your right arm up to the sky. Now come up onto your left fingertips or make a fist with your left hand. The fingertips hurts your wrist or your fingers. Push your left fingers or fist down and twist your upper back. Keep the twist of your upper back, but then turn your top palm forward towards the front of your mat. Squeeze the arm, and as you exhale, stretch your top arm 
past your ear. Try to keep the twist of your upper body. Inhale, release your right hand down. Step back down, we're facing dog pose. Inhale, now take your left leg up into the sky. Exhale, bring your knee to your nose. Hold it here for a moment. Raise your knee up, press your hands down. Inhale, stretch your left leg back. And then exhale, step your left foot forward to a lunge. Again, lower your right knee. Come up onto the right fingertips or fist and twist your left arm up to the sky. With each exhale, push your right fingers or fist down and twist your upper back a little bit more. Then turn your top palm first, then wait for your exhale and reach your top arm past your ear. And instead of letting the arm just kind of hang out, reach it fully and stretch. Inhale, release your left hand down. This time, step to the top of your mat. Come to a forward bend. Inhale, rise all the way up to stand. And exhale, hands to your sides, mountain pose. Now a few sun salutes to really get the body warmed up. Inhale, take your arms up. Pause here. Interlace every finger except your pointer and thumb. This is called Kali Mudra. Exhale, side bend to your left. So your right ribs and right hip stretch open. Inhale, come back up through center. Exhale, side bend to your right and move your hips to the left. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, fold to the ground, standing forward fold. Inhale, lengthen your spine halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, step your right leg to the back, lower your right knee to the floor. Inhale, take your arms up, hook your thumbs with your palms forward, stretch up fully. Exhale, release your hands down, step back down when facing dog. Inhale, come forward to a plank pose. Exhale, bend your elbows, shift forward and lower to the ground. Point your toes, inhale to cobra. Exhale, lower, tuck your toes, reach up and back, down, facing dog. Inhale, take your right leg into the air. Exhale, again, bring your knee to your nose and your shoulders forward. Inhale, stretch your right leg back. Push back through your right foot, and then exhale, bring your right leg forward, left knee to the ground, inhale, sweep the arms, hook your thumbs again. This is low lunge or Anjaneyasana. Exhale, release your hands down, step forward to the front of your mat, forward fold. Inhale, stand up, arms to the sky. Exhale, hands to your sides, mountain pose. All right, second side, here we go. Inhale, reach your arms up. Again, take Kali Mudra. Exhale, side bend to your left. Press your hips to the right. Inhale, back up. Exhale, side bend to your right and press your hips to the left. Inhale through the middle, both arms up. Look up and exhale, fold to the ground, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step your left leg back, left knee down, just one breath, arms up, thumbs hooked, low lunge. Exhale, hands down, step back down, we're facing dog. Inhale to plank pose. Exhale, bend your elbow, shift forward and lower. Inhale, cobra, or if you prefer, or the mukha up dog, take it. And then exhale. Downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your left leg up. Exhale, bring your knee to your nose again. Lift the knee up. Inhale, reach your left leg back. And then exhale, left foot through. Last time like this, right knee down. Inhale, arms up to the sky. Hook your thumbs, stretch. Exhale, release. Step to the top of your mat. Come to a standing forward fold. Inhale, stand all the way up. And then exhale, hands to your sides. Mountain pose, Tadasana. Ah, there we go. Inhale, bend your knees. Now take your arms up, chair pose. Just to wake up the upper back a little bit, stay in chair, turn your palms forward, bend your elbows up to 90 degrees like you're doing a pull up. 
and squeeze your shoulder blades into the back of your chest. Then touch the floor, stretch your legs, come to a forward bend. Step back now, downward facing dog. In downward facing dog, bend just your right knee, turn your left toes out about 30 degrees, almost like your left foot was now coming into the back foot of warrior one, and try to press your left heel down all the way. So right knee's bent, left leg is straight, and then try to reach your hips back. Switch sides, bend your left knee, turn your right toes up to the right about 30 degrees. Press your right heel down, squeeze your right leg straight, reach your hips back. You'll be feeling this most likely in your calf, hamstring, and hip. Switch sides one more time. Right knee bend, turn the left toes out, stretch the heel. And then bend your left knee, turn your right toes out, stretch the right heel down. Come back to center, inhale, take your right leg into the air. Exhale, sweep your right leg forward. This time, keep your back knee off the ground. Inhale, come on up for a high lunge. For this high lunge, bend your back knee just a little bit. Take Kali Mudra again, and exhale, side bend to your right. As you side bend right, make sure you're breathing, and squeeze the arms. Inhale through center. Exhale, release your hands. Step back. Down or facing dog. Inhale, take your left leg up. Exhale, step your left foot forward. Inhale, come on up. High lunge. You can let the back knee be bent just a little bit here for this variation. Take Kali Mudra again. Stretch up on your inhale. Then as you exhale, side bend to your left. Now as you side bend left, keep trying to turn your chest more forward instead of letting the chest turn down towards the ground like it will want to. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, release your hands down. Step back, down your dog. Inhale, the plank pose. Exhale, bend your elbows, come down. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Oh yeah, I love cobra so much. And then exhale, tuck your toes. Downward facing dog. Okay. Walk slowly to the back of your mat now. Take your hands to your hips and come on up. All right, so now I'm gonna to turn to face you. In case you haven't done this with me before in other videos or in class, let's just do this together really quick. This is called making your side body long. And my favorite way to do it is by taking the palms onto the very sides of the ribs. Now, if your shoulders can't do this, some of us, we can't take our palms to the sides of the ribs because our shoulders can't open that much. Just take them as much to the sides as you can. Now, as you inhale, I want you to pull your ribs up and out of your hips and shrug your shoulders up into your ears. This is not meant to be the most comfortable thing, but you'll notice a lot of length through your sideways, which is what we're going for. Now keep the length, but then take your elbows back and your shoulders back towards each other so that you feel a strong gripping of the shoulder blades into the back of your spine. When you take the shoulder blades into the back of the spine, keep the lift in the side rooms. Now keep all of this, but then just release your hands down by your sides, and it'll feel like you're kind of in mountain pose and a little bit of a cobra at the same time. And then just let that release. All right. Now from here, if you have your blocks, place both of your blocks on either side of the front of your mat. Again, if you don't have blocks, this will work. It'll just be a little bit more challenging for you, especially if your hamstrings are a bit tighter. Ian, I'll come to the front of your mat, stretch your arms up, and then exhale, full, touch the floor, standing forward, full. Now from here, step your left leg to the back of your mat. Place your hands up on your blocks. I'm gonna put my hands up on the middle height of the blocks. The higher your blocks go, the more accessible this kind of work is. So first, lift your back thigh up. Then again, this first part's not meant to be super comfortable, but as you inhale, shrug your side waist forward, get really long through your side body. 
Now keep that. Don't move your feet and straighten your right leg about halfway, not all the way. Now notice when you straighten your right leg halfway, the side waist tries to shrink. Inhale, pull your side waist long, and then try to get your upper back to back bend like a deep cobra. Now one of the things you're probably noticing is that your right side waist is probably harder to lengthen than your left side waist. So keep your left hand on the floor of the block, but now take your right hand and grab the right side of your butt cheek. Grab the butt cheek in a way that your thumb is between your belly and your thigh and your four fingers wrap around the fleshiest, widest part of your butt. Then as you exhale, push your outer right butt cheek, roll it towards the back of your mat, and at the same time, lengthen your right side waist more forward. Keep your hand on your butt and straighten, oh yeah, your right leg all the way now. Keep rolling the right buttock back, keep lengthening the chest. Squeeze your right leg. And then release your right hand to the block. Rebend your right knee and then switch sides. Step your right leg back, left leg forward. Hands to the blocks. Again, first thing we're going to do, lift the back thigh a little bit. Then inhale, side body long, exhale, keep the length of the side body, straighten your front leg about halfway. Then, now you'll be able to see a little better, I should have done this way. First, grab your outer hip with your thumb in the crease between your belly and thigh, wrap your four fingers around, grab your butt, it's your butt, grab it. Then as you exhale, you're telling your butt, get back there. Push it back, roll it back. Then at the same time, keep lengthening your waist and slowly straighten your leg, trying to keep all of that length. Watch not to over crank your neck while doing this work. And then release. Move your blocks off to the sides. We'll come back to that. Step back, downward dog pose. Separate your feet as wide as your mat. Bend your knees, stretch your hips back, re-straighten your legs. Take your feet back to hips distance. Inhale, come to a plank pose. Exhale, lower down. Now, we're going to do something that we used to call drunken cobra in the Anusara days. I don't know what it's called anymore. But once you're lying on your belly, come up onto your fingertips. Place your fingers by your ribs, but then take your hands off of your mat and onto the floor. Now inhale, come on up into a finger stand cobra, about maybe 60% of your deepest cobra. Then, as you exhale, turn your chest to the right. And as you turn your chest to the right, let your left elbow come forward and let your left armpit shrug up into your ear. Then inhale, come back to the center, turn your chest to the left, let the right elbow come forward, shrug your right shoulder into your right ear so you're lengthening your right waist. Try not to turn or lift your hips while doing this. Now come back to center, coil up a little bit higher. We'll do it one more time. Exhale, twist your chest to the right. Inhale back to the middle, and then twist your chest to the left. Come back through center, roll your shoulders back, come up a bit higher, and then exhale, come on down. Place your hands, tuck your toes, reach up and back. Downward dog pose. From downward dog, bend your knees. Look forward, walk or jump to the front of your mat. Come to a forward fold. Okay, so now stay in your forward fold. This is a, a, a weird variation of Uttanasana, but I really love it. Stay in your forward fold, but take your feet as wide as your mat now. Bend both knees. Now place your right fingertips to the inside of your right foot and your right elbow to the inside of your knee. From here, walk your left fingers forward and place your left hand up on a block. Now, with your left hand up on a block, straighten only your left leg and twist your chest to the left. Try to pull your left armpit up into your ear and up towards the sky and begin to take your gaze up to the ceiling underneath your armpit. The more you walk your left hand and block forward, 
the more length you'll get. Now, to help you find leverage here to twist, which is really hard to do in this pose, exhale, push your right arm, your right elbow, into your right knee and turn your upper body to the left. Oh, I love this. Oh, my goodness. And then slowly come back to center. Now, switch, bend your left knee, place your left fingertips to the inside of the left leg, left elbow to the inside, Place your right fingertips on the block, walk the block forward, and slowly straighten your right leg. Again, you can have your right fingers on the floor, but it will be much more difficult to find length and twist here. Now squeeze your right leg towards straight, push your left elbow into the left knee, and really pull your right armpit up into your ear, and look underneath your armpit. Twist your chest like you were an owl looking at the sky underneath your own arm. Inhale, come back to center. Bend both knees a bit and slowly rise up. Oh, I feel like a new man after that pose. Okay. Now, come back to the front of your mat. Stand with your feet hips distance. Inhale, stretch your arms up to the sky. And exhale, fold to the ground, forward fold. Step your right leg to the back of your mat, lower your right knee, pad your knee if it doesn't like too much pressure. All right, so now here's the deal with this kind of work. Reach your left arm up, bend your back knee, and hold your foot with your left hand. Now you'll notice that when you reach back and grab your foot, a lot of us, our left side waist will shrink. Now this isn't because of tightness in the side waist. It's because of tightness most likely in the quad and the shoulder. Now there's lots of ways to release the quad and the shoulder, but today we're gonna to use the side body lengthening. So bend your left elbow, holding onto your foot. Inhale, shrug your left shoulder and left armpit up into your ear. Then exhale, roll your left shoulder blade onto the back of your chest and twist. Do that again, bend your elbow, keep the elbow bent the entire time. Lengthen your side waist up, roll your left shoulder blade back, and then twist. Now for the last breath, kick your foot back into your hand and twist your lower abdomen a bit deeper. Inhale, release, and then please switch sides, right leg forward, left leg back. Now some of you at home are thinking, I can't lengthen my side body at all in this pose. So if that's the case, then elevate your bottom hand a little bit. Put your hand on a block or a book, whatever you have at home. Twist your right arm up to the sky, reach back, hold your foot, hold the pinky toe side of your foot. Again, notice if the right waist shrinks, bend your right elbow. My favorite way to find length in the side waist in this pose is as you hold onto your foot, try to pull your foot up towards the sky shrug your shoulder up into your ear, and then roll your right shoulder blade into the back of your spine. And then do that again. Inhale, lengthen, pull up to your right side waist, roll the right shoulder blade back. And then for the last breath, kick your foot back and turn the lowest skin of your belly towards the sky. And then inhale, come on out. And then I want you to just have a seat for a moment facing towards the camera or your screen, or your iPad, or your whatever. And just have a seat any way that you like. So the first time that this kind of work really made sense to me is when a teacher had us sit many years ago. And then just as you're sitting, I want you to let the side waist shrink. Right? We all know how to do this, but we do it all the live long day. Now with your side waist shrinking and your arm bones dropping way below the base of your neck, you take your arms out to the side and you try to externally rotate your arms. It's very difficult, if not impossible, to do. We do a lot of external rotation of the upper arms in yoga. And if you don't have first the length in the side waist, it becomes very difficult. And in some poses, particularly binds, it can be damaging to the rotator cuff. So if you inhale and lengthen your side body, then try to take the upper arms and the shoulders back and you'll feel a lot more space, right? This is much, uh, this is really nice to do mainly in twists and back bends, but other poses as well. So now I want you to go back to downward facing dog 
And we're going to try a twisted thigh stretch again. So bring your left foot forward, right knee down, twist your left arm up, reach back with your left hand, hold your foot. Now just for a moment, for experimentation, is that the right word? Yeah, experimentation purposes, let your left side waist shrink and try to twist. And you're like, oh, I can't. Oh, I can't twist. Oh, shit. So instead, bend your elbow, lengthen up, then roll your shoulder back. Turn open, notice the difference, and then release, switch sides, right leg forward, left leg back, bend your left knee, reach back with your right hand and hold your foot. Now again, the tightness isn't coming from the waist here, but if you can lengthen the waist, it helps to release the tightness that kind of pulls the spine downward in this pose. Then roll your right shoulder back, twist open and then release back to downward dog. Walk your hands to the back of your mat and stand up. All right, now we're gonna do something that the first time my teacher taught this to me, boy, I hated it and I didn't understand it and I never wanted to do it again, but now I kind of get it. So take your legs wide, preparing for standing poses. Then turn your right toes out to face the front of your mat Turn your left toes in a little bit as if you were doing triangle pose. Now put the block on the pinky toe side of your foot, again, like you were doing triangle pose. But here we go. Keep your right hand on your hip. Take your left arm up to the sky. In a moment, your hips are gonna turn a little bit when you do this, but I want you to try to keep your hips as much as you can where they are. Now take your left hand all the way down to the block. I know this is very confusing, feels very wrong. Again, the hips will turn a little bit when you do this, but try not to turn them too much. Pull your left armpit up into your left ear, and what you'll be feeling here is a lot of length in your left waist, and probably quite a stretch in your hamstring. Then inhale, come on up slowly and switch sides. Turn your right toes in, left toes out. So the idea of this triangle variation, I call it confused triangle because it's half twisted triangle, it's half regular triangle. But the idea behind this is mainly just to get length in one side of your waist. Left hand to your hip, right arm up, and then take your right hand all the way to the block. Now, if when you do this variation, your back knee hurts a little bit, Turn your back foot in a little bit more. Then with your right hand on the block, squeeze your left leg and shrug your right shoulder up into your right ear. And then inhale slowly, come on up. Parallel your feet, bring your feet together. All right, so now we're gonna take a pretty complex entrance into Twisted Triangle, but I think it's really effective. So you can either follow along or maybe just watch me first and then try it because there's several steps along the way. But you're gonna take your legs wide apart again, turn your right toes out. We're gonna start the same way, preparing for triangle pose, but this time, right, you're taking the left arm up. Try not to turn the hips too much, they'll turn a little bit, and take your left hand to the block. So what you'll notice here is that we're getting a lot of length in the left waist. Now, I want you to bring your left foot a little bit closer to your right foot and turn your back toes in 45 degrees and begin to square your hips a bit more. So a more classic twisted triangle pose. So now we have all this length in the left side waist, but the right side waist is super short. So as you inhale, I want you to lengthen your right side waist too. Push and roll your right hip back towards the back of your mat. Roll your right shoulder blade onto the back of your spine. Then take your top arm up to the sky. Then inhale, slowly come on up. So the first step is meant to create length in the side that you're twisting from. Then as you start to shift the feet and the hips, then you add the length of the side that you're twisting to. It's a little bit complicated, but if you can find that length, again, the stiffest parts of your body, 
that prohibit the lengthening of the spine in this pose, like the hamstrings in your hips, get released. One more time, right arm up, take your right hand to the block. Stay here for a moment, again, finding length in the side that you're turning from, which is the right sideways. Then shorten your stance and turn your back toes a bit more forward. Turn the right hip more forward. Now, before you take your top arm, your left arm up to the sky, shrug your left shoulder up into your ear. Push your left hip back at the same time. Maximum length. Now, don't take the left arm up yet, but pull the left shoulder blade back into the spine. Then take your top arm up to the sky. Squeeze your legs. Hold yourself strongly. Then inhale, slowly come on up. Ah. Now, if that was really hard to follow along or it was kind of clunky, I'd recommend maybe pausing right here and trying it again one or two more times until it starts to make a little bit more sense or feels a little bit more, I don't know why I want to say the word unctuous because that, I don't even know what that word means, but a little bit more yogic. I can't, I can't think of a word right now. A little better. All right, here we go. Back to downward facing dog. Inhale from downward facing dog, come forward to a plank pose. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, cobra or upward dog. And then exhale, downward facing dog pose. All right. Now get into the upper back a little bit more. Come down onto all fours. Twist your right arm up, turn your chest to the right, and then thread your right shoulder and right ear to the ground. Come up onto your left fingers. I call this reaching for the car keys under the bed pose. And then walk your left hand around to about 12 o'clock. Bend your left elbow and pull your left elbow to the sky. Then on your next exhale, I want you to actually take your bottom arm, your right arm, and crawl it further over towards the left and pull your top elbow up even more. So that'll increase the twist of your upper back. Here, notice my hips are moving. That's fine. Let your hips move as they want. And then inhale, slowly come on back. And then switch sides. Take your left arm up to the sky. Thread your left shoulder, left ear to the ground. Walk your right hand to about 12 o'clock. Keep your right elbow bent. Point your elbow up. And then as you exhale, crawl your bottom arm further to the right and take your top arm further back. And then slowly come on out. Sit on your heels for a moment. Interlace, oh yeah, your fingers and stretch the arms back. All right, now two more things. Three more things, maybe. All right. Make sure that you have your locker blocks at the front of your mat again, and come back to downward facing dog. So we're gonna do one more standing pose, and it's a little bit of a funky variation of Paribhita Ardha Chandrasana, or Revolve Half Moon. Step your right foot forward to a lunge, put your left hand on your block, I highly recommend putting the block at the highest setting this time. Now from here, I want you to place your right hand on your right hip, step your back foot in, walk the block forward, and raise your left leg up. Pause here. Now in a moment, I'm going to have you move your left hand and block way forward, and it's really important you don't bring your hips with you. So walk the block forward, keep your right hip over the ankle. Now you'll feel, oh, that lengthens my side waist. How nice. Then walk your block way over to the right. Oh, it lengthens my side waist even more. Now push and roll your right hip back. What's your right side waist doing? Is it shrinking? Oh yeah, you betcha. So now lengthen your right side waist, roll your right shoulder blade back, and then take your top arm up to the sky. Inhale, slowly come on out. Back to downward dog. Now to be sure, that variation of half moon is more intense than the classic variation where you keep the bottom arm under the shoulder. But we did it with the intention 
of creating length in our waists. Left foot forward to a lunge, last standing pose. Thank God, because I'm exhausted. Right hand onto the block, left hand to your hip. I keep stepping back a little bit because I don't want to fall off the frame. Step forward, raise the leg. Hand to your hip. Now, again, walk the block forward without bringing your hips with you. Then take the block over to the left. Pull your right shoulder up in your ear. Now you can see, oh, my right waist has my left waist has super shrunk. So pull your left ribs up. Roll your left shoulder blade back. Then top arm up to the sky. I call this death variation twisted half moon. Then come on out, and you can either take a brief child's pose, or I'm going to do a vinyasa just to open up my upper back a bit. I might even try up dog, even though my arms aren't long enough. Oh God, I need long arm. And then exhale, downward dog. Everybody back to downward dog. Then we're going to do one more pose. So grab your strap and you're gonna make a loop with your strap. Now the bigger the loop, the easier this pose is. So you can always adjust it, right? I recommend starting with the bigger loop and then kind of working your way down as your body needs. So what I'd recommend everyone starting at home with is roughly a loop somewhere in, in this size. And then I want you to watch this pose first. So this is a pose called Parivrita Uttanasana. Now Parivrita means revolved, Uttanasana, standing forward bend. So I'm gonna stand facing towards you. I think that'll be the easiest to see. So again, I'd recommend watching first. Place the strap around your left foot, the loop around your left foot. Feet hips distance apart. Then you're gonna bend your knees slightly and go to a forward bend. Now most of us are now gonna take the left hand and just grab the outside edge of your right foot or even the outside of the ankle, like this. My level five friends at home, you can try the full variation of the pose, which is where you take your bottom arm, flip it around like it's the bottom arm, an eagle arm, take your elbow outside of the calf, and then your four fingers go to the pinky toe side of the foot and the thumb goes to the inside edge of the foot. Again, this is super deep to grab the foot like this. So most of us can just grab this way. Okay. Now, both knees are still bent a little bit. Turn your chest to the right. Then from here, you're gonna take your right arm, grab the loop. Do not grab the tail, grab inside of the loop. And then as you exhale, you're going to pull up on the loop and turn, take your top armpit up, look underneath your armpit to the sky, like we were doing earlier. Then you might be able to straighten both legs. That's super intense. And then inhale, slowly come on out. So if you weren't able to turn your chest at all, I would make the loop bigger. If it was really easy for you, then you can make the loop smaller and smaller. And eventually there's no strap at all in this pose and you're holding the hands, the feet with both hands. Now take the strap around your right foot. Take your right hand. Again, either just hold the outside of the ankle or your palm does this swinging underneath like eagle arms. And then you try to get the elbow outside the calf. It was really hard for me. My body doesn't do this easily. And then four fingers outside the pinky toe side of the foot, thumb to the inside. Then left hand reaches up and around, grab the loop, pull on the loop, twist your chest to the left. Now I actually enjoy this pose a bit more if I keep the knees bent a little bit. I can get more into my upper back, my side waist, or you can start to straighten the legs. Again, if you're at home and you've got really open legs and shoulders and spine, you can try taking your left hand and grab the foot instead of the belt. And then come on up. So that's Parivrita Uttanasana. It's one of my favorite twists. 
using the belt, using a nice warm up, really gets in beautifully to the side, waist, and the shoulders. Final time, come to downward facing dog. Ooh. Inhale, come to a plank position, lower to the floor, and then roll over onto your backs. And then one of the really nice things to do after all of that twisting is to do a little bit of light back bending. So bend your knees, place your feet on the ground, bend your elbows, put your elbows by your ribs. Now push the elbows down into the floor and raise your hips up. This is bridge pose with robot arms. The more you can push your elbows into the ground and tuck your shoulders underneath, the more opening of the upper back you'll get. Then reach underneath, interlace your fingers or hold your strap if your shoulders are a bit stiffer and walk your shoulders in and together. Exhale, lower your hips down. Take a moment. Enjoy not being in Padi Frita poses. And then let's do one more bridge pose. Elbows bent, lift your hips, walk your shoulders underneath, interlace your fingers. Always switch the interlace, although I know you're doing that at home. You're not. You're switching every single time, aren't you? And then exhale, release. From here, bring your right leg in half happy baby pose. Stretch your left leg straight on the floor. I'll do a whole half happy baby class. Doesn't sound very interesting, but it's a really lovely class. And then switch sides, bring your left leg in. Notice I'm holding my ankle. My arms aren't long enough in relationship to my foot to hold the foot comfortably. So you still get the same pose. And then release. Now cross your right ankle over your left thigh, thread the needle. Mm. Switch sides, cross your left ankle over your right thigh. Thread the needle. Then release. We'll take one final supine twist just to ensure that our backs are released. Place your feet underneath your knees and then take your feet a little wider. Drop both of your knees to the right. Lift your right foot up, place it on top of your left knee and gently press your left knee down. And then inhale, come back, both knees to the left, left foot on top of the right knee, and press your right knee down lightly. Come back to center. Give both knees a little squeeze into your chest. Bring your head to your face. Your, excuse me, your face to your, no, your nose to your, Jesus. Squeeze in. And then the next hill, Shavasana, corpse pose. Always take corpse pose, even if your dog or cat or child has now run over to you because you're lying supine and exposed. Invite them to take corpse pose with you. Breathe deeply in and exhale out. 
Bend your knees one at a time. Roll over onto your side. And come up. So I hope that that lengthening help you found helped you find a little bit more space and openness in your twist, your legs, hamstrings, hips, and quads. Um, like I often say at the end of class, I know that YouTube is a free platform. I always appreciate any and every donation that you can offer me to support my teaching by Venmo, PayPal, or Zelle. You can see the payment instructions um, down in the description of this video. Uh, if you liked this or had comments or questions or requests, you can message me or leave them in the comment section, I guess. I hope you feel wonderful for the rest of your day and or night. Enjoy!